Hello, viewers. Today we have a 2006 Mazda 3 with the 2.3 liter engine, and we are going to be replacing the passenger side lower control arm. Welcome back to the Moose Mobile Auto Repair Channel. And so uh, we are going to be replacing both control arms, but in, in this video, I'm just going to be showing the, the passenger side. And I'm replacing it because the, the welds are broken on the control arm. And so uh, we are going to be replacing it today. So I have the wheel off now. So the first thing you want to do is to uh, re remove the nut uh, for the pinch bolt. So we are going to take that off first. There's a nut here. So we are going to uh, take that off. This one is a, is a 14 mil. Now, in case if the nut is uh, is rusted and sees on there, you may need to heat it up with a torch or by using an uh, uh, induction tool. So the other end of the pinch bolt is also a 14. So you want to use uh, either a wrench or a socket to hold the bolt as you are loosening the nut. Now, you don't want to loosen the bolt, you want to loosen the nut. So I'm using a wrench in the back. So I'm going to, to take off the nut. Now, uh, on what? I like to do, I just, I, I like to leave the nut on at the end and we are going to use a hammer to top this out. So we're going to use the hammer to top this. And then you can proceed to uh, take off the nut. So now you can uh, take out the bolt. This uh, this vehicle has been recently serviced, or well, not uh, recently, but in in uh, in some years ago, uh, I I replaced the lower control arms, and so I uh, I, I greased up the bolts well, so it's very easy to take out. So if you're in the rust belt area, like here in Canada, uh, it, 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 you may need to, uh, to heat up these bolts if, uh, if, if they are stuck. Now these bolts are typically are not uh, reusable, but I've seen some people reuse them without issues, but the... Uh, the control arm <laughs> comes comes with a new one, so we are going to use the the new bolt and nut. Just make sure that you uh, that you know the the orientation as to how it, uh, the uh, the bolt came out. So it was going uh, this way uh, towards the vehicle. So so make sure that that you have it installed on the correct side. Uh, after you install the new one. So we're just going to push down on this. You may need to use a hammer to hammer down on the control arm. Sometimes you can use an air hammer to push down here or to, to hammer on the side here or something. Or you can also use a, a pickle fork if you want. 
that you're not going to be re reusing the control arm and or ball joint. So you can do it uh, all kinds of ways. I'm just going to use a pry bar to push down on it. This one already came out easily. So we are just going to leave it like that. We're going to start uh, removing the other bolts. So we're going to remove these two bolts. They are two uh, 17s. Now we have a bolt here, it's a uh, 19. Uh, you may have a hard time trying to get this one out because the AC compressor is in the way. So uh, you may need to remove the bracket that's holding the AC compressor. In some rare cases, you may have to just to uh, remove the AC compressor uh, <laughs> mounting bolts to uh, to get it out of the way so you can get the uh, the bolt out this one is uh is a 19 so we are going to 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 loosen that one up there's no room <laughs> put an impact here so just using a wrench a long wrench so what you can do after you have loosened it up you can use a wrench to, to pull back on the bolt after it's loose but it needs to be off the threads all the way and then you'll be able to uh, to pull back on the bolt you can probably use a pry bar to pry slightly and carefully on the ac compressor uh, if you need to so this is in the way now so i'm not able to get the, uh, the bolt out so sometimes you may be able to get away with just prying slightly without damaging anything if you're careful enough just to, to lift the engine up a little bit but the, there still isn't much clearance so you may need to take off the bracket So the bracket uh, nuts are, are 12 millimeters. You should be able to uh, take it out after that. Some uh, pieces of uh, rust flakes. So you may be able to to pry to get the uh, bolt out. We'll see. Uh, I want to try to do the least amount of work possible. So um, I'm trying not to remove the AC compressor, but I I have in the past in order to get that uh, bolt out. So sometimes you may be able to just be able to pry in order to get the bolt out if you're if you're able to so i have the engine jacked up over here with a block of wood so I may be able to uh, to get it out.
just uh, I'm loosening up the bolt so I have a little bit of more room now because I jacked up the engine. I just used a jack and uh, a block of wood. You should be able to get this out afterwards. So uh, I raised the engine a, a tiny bit more so I can get some clearance. Then you should be able to, to get this uh, bolt out after that. It's a, so you don't need to remove the AC compressor. You can if you want to, but uh, it's more work. Now it's out. So I just use a jack to raise the engine a tiny bit. You don't need to raise it uh, too much, <laughs> just enough <laughs> to give you the clearance to get this out. So now you should be able to get the control arm out now. This one just s slides out. I got the ball joint loose already. So you can just use like a pry bar or something <laughs> to slide it out push against the, the subframe and the control arm to get it out. Should be able to pop it out. And then that's it. And she's out now. So now here's the old one. And here's the new one. Uh, I compare them side to side. Uh, this is where the welds are broken off. Over here. I'm trying to hold these together side to side. You can see there's the welds are intact. It stops just uh, right about here. And then uh, there's a slight opening here. And, uh, and that's normal. On the old one, the opening is too much. You can see how it uh, uh, expanded. How it's wide over here. And then it gets uh, very narrow. So you, you can see the difference here. Here it's uh, it's uh, opened up, and here you can see uh, the welds are, are are there on the new one. So this control arm is an aftermarket control arm. It's a Moog control arm. Here's the part number: RK six two zero zero four zero. This one does not have a, a grease fitting on this. So hopefully uh, this part works okay. I've heard that, that people have uh, good luck with majority of Moog aftermarket parts. But I don't know if some people have had issues with this. Somebody stated on some of the uh, reviews online saying that there was not enough grease inside here. So anyhow, uh, we are going to install this on the vehicle. So what came in this box? So it came with a brand new, uh, a brand new uh, pinch bolt and nut. And there's a, a warning on the plastic here saying uh, proper torque in the and stuff like that. So what I I like to do is to add some grease onto the bolts so they don't uh, seize up in the future. We are going to install the control arm now and, uh, and try to line it up. I 
one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, I like to, to add grease inside the bushings here. So I like to add grease inside so they don't seize up uh, in the future. And I, I like to put some uh, on the bolts uh, as well. <clears throat> Just trying to, to line up uh, the threads on this now. You may need to use like a socket to turn it by hand first before you uh, tighten it up put the other one in I need to try to get this as straight as possible so you can line up the uh, the fixed hex nut that's on top of the uh, control arm and years ago I had <laughs> trouble trying to line these bolts up if you use cheap control arm parts so make sure you use a good quality uh, control arm because then you're you're gonna have a hard time trying to get these bolts in I just like to thread this all the way by hand so I don't uh, crash thread anything you just gotta make sure that it's straight in order to get this in and uh, sometimes you you may need to push and to wiggle onto the the steering knuckle to push it out of the way before you get the the ball joint in Should be okay now. So we are going to tighten it up. I was saying that I didn't have the ball joint in, so I just I push on the knuckle back and forth to get this straight. Now some people you can add a little bit of of some weight to here, like a like a jack or something, just to hold the weight on to get these bolts in temporarily, and then you, you can take the weight off. Because you have to make sure you get this part straight. Now I've used cheap aftermarket parts in the past. And these bolts would, would never ever thread uh, into the, the fixed hex on top of the uh, control arm. And so it, it took me hours and hours just to get those bolts in. Because the part is very cheap. So make sure you use... Uh, a good quality part because uh, if you don't you, you may not be able to get these uh, two bolts in so you can have a look here on top and where the bolts uh, go in just to make sure they're both in the hole properly and then you can uh, tighten them up So we're just going to tighten these up a tiny bit. We'll uh, tighten them down a, a little bit more after. Now I'll put the torques back on the screen for you guys to see. So now uh, we need to, to line this up. I noticed that the the rubber pad just came off off of this thing so I don't know if I'll be able to get it back on here I may just leave it but I'll see so we're gonna use uh, some grease on the bolt
I always like to use a lot of grease on the uh, suspension bolt because I don't want to have any problems in the future in case if I need to remove the bolts. And you can see uh, earlier in the video, I didn't have any issues removing those bolts because uh, I've, uh, I've uh, lubricated those bolts in the past. So you won't have any problems later down the road. So we're just going to, to line this up. So what we are going to do now is to get this inside the, the steering knuckle now because it's giving me a hard time trying to line this up. I'm going to try uh, to line this into the, the, the steering knuckle. Okay, that's in. Now we're just gonna try to to line this up inside here. Uh, you may need to use a pry bar to get it inside. And, uh, and push against the uh, the steering knuckle over here on this side. Push on the cal on where the caliper is. You want to push here. You want to push and at the same time using the pry bar to line up the hole. You can uh, insert the bolt thereafter. There we go. Bolt is in. We just need to, uh, <laughs> to thread it in now. Just uh, don't be in a hurry to do this job. Just be patient and take your time. And things will go uh, smoothly. So I'm just... Uh, doing it by hand here trying to, to catch the uh, the threads inside you may need to to wiggle a little bit with the pry bar in order to uh, to, to to thread the, the bolt and So I have a shallow 19 millimeter snap-on socket. So we're just gonna use that instead of using a wrench. So I'm trying to get this to thread in. So you may need to pry on the control arm a little bit to, uh, to line up the, uh, the threads. So we are going to tighten this up uh, tight. I'm going to put the torque spec on the screen. You don't have to torque them. It's good if you do, but uh, you just you can tighten it as tight as you can without over tightening it and, uh, and that should be fine.
Now we are going to tighten up these bolts a tiny bit more. I'm going to put the torque spec on the screen. Just, we're going to make sure that the ball joint is all the way in. Just give it a light tap. Just to make sure on the side here is safe. You don't want to hammer on the ball joint because that's going to damage uh, the ball joint. Just, just to bring it up all the way in. Make sure it's, that the pinch bolt is, uh, is all the way in, inside the hole. I'll show you guys in uh, in just a minute. I like to do, if there's any issues in here or if there's any rust, I like to use a, a wire brush inside to clean the rust. But in this case, it wasn't seized up or anything, so I'm just going to leave it. Usually I, I like to apply a little bit of grease inside here if you're able to. I like to put some grease inside and also grease uh, on the bolts on the uh, the pinch bolt that way you won't have any problems if you need to remove this uh, for next time and I just like to add a little bit of uh, grease onto the new uh, pinch bolt so we're going to use the one that that came with the uh, control arm. So we're going to push this up and insert the pinch bolt all the way in. And we're going to uh, install on that on the other side. That pinch bolt was going this way uh, towards the, it's pointing towards the rear of the vehicle. So make sure you put it in the same way you, you took it out. Make sure that the that the the ball joint, the the stud is all the way inside the uh, the steering knuckle. It must be uh, uh, above the uh, where the steering uh, knuckle is. So I don't know if I can show you guys uh, well on camera. So it just needs to be above the. the I don't know if it's the uh, tapered. A portion so you got to make sure it's in all the way so we're going to uh, install the nut so we're just going to tighten up the the nut now so the pinch bolt is a 17 for the the bolt and the and the nut is a 15 on the aftermarket uh, Moog one so we're just going to tighten this up you just need to uh, tighten this up So I'm going to torque the, uh, the pinch bolt now. The torque spec states uh, it uh, has a range, so it's uh, thirty between thirty one point eight to forty three point three foot pounds. So I just I torqued it around maybe like thirty five or something. I'm not too uh, comfortable torque torquing these pinch bolts. Uh, extremely tight because I don't need to be uh, all that tight. These pinch bolts don't need to be uh, too tight. So I probably put roughly between 35 and 40, but it's safe to do anywhere between 31.8 to 43.3 foot pounds. The torque spec for for this bolt here is uh, I believe 110 foot pounds. 
and the two in the back are uh, are 75. Uh, I'll put the proper torque specs on the screen for you guys to see. So these are the two rear bolts should be around 75 foot pounds. And this one, uh, 110. So I'm just going to tighten up the bolts again, just to be sure. So what I like to do after I'm done, I like to double check my work. I just want to make sure that there's no play in the ball joint. So I like to place a pry bar and to pry it down just to make sure that it's not loose. Uh, some years ago, when I used to work with somebody uh, in, the, in one of the shops that I used to work with, the... Uh, the ball joint stud was not in all the way, but the pinch bolt was, and I would feel like a vibration down the road, roughly at like 80 kilometers an hour uh, and up. And so I found out that, that the stud was not in completely all the way. So you gotta make sure that the, that the stud is in all the way and everything is tight and double check your work. I also like to push down on this just to feel if there's any play and then that's it so we are going to reinstall the cover for the ac compressor i'm gonna see if i can put the rubber piece back or not this is uh it came off so I'm going to see if I can just put it here. This is to help reduce uh, <laughs> vibration and stuff. Once you tighten it up, it won't be able to go anywhere, so you should be okay. These nuts, uh, you don't really need a torque spec for these. Just tighten them down snug and you should be okay. Everything, uh, everything uh, looks good here, so I'm going to lower the jack now. So after you're done, just make sure you shake the wheel, just to make sure there's no play or looseness, and then you should be all good to go. Once the vehicle is on the floor, <laughs> Torque the wheels down and, and then that's it. So now the passenger side is all done. I'm going to do the driver's side, but I will put that in a separate video. So now I'm just going to clean off the brake rotor in case if I got any grease or dirt on there and, uh, and throw the wheel on. I'm probably going to send this vehicle to an uh, alignment shop to have the uh, alignment done after I'm done. In most cases, usually when you replace control arms, the uh, wheel alignment will be slightly off. So you probably have to go and get an uh, uh, alignment done afterwards. Now, usually when you do any steering and or 
suspension work, it's always a good idea to do a wheel alignment and to make sure that everything is uh, tracking true. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already a subscriber and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day and take care.